If you are a new or aspiring virtual assistant, these are the mistakes that you do not want to make as you're getting started. I'm Abby Ashley, and I've trained over 5,000 individuals to launch, grow, and scale their own at-home virtual assistant business. I was able to scale my own VA business to a six-figure company and gone on to create a multi-seven-figure business, helping people like you start their own VA businesses. And I love training people on what to do and what not to do. So let's jump into my biggest no-nos, the things that I do not want you to do as you're getting started in your business. I almost forgot to mention, if you love content like this, if you love learning about how to start your own virtual assistant business using the skills that you already have, make sure that you subscribe to this channel and click the bell to be notified every time I release new content. Let's jump into those biggest mistakes. Today, I wanna to chat with you about the three biggest mistakes that new VAs make, because I have seen this time and time again. Again, we've worked with over 5,000 individuals personally to launch their business. And so we've kind of seen over time, I've been doing this since 2016 now, what works and what doesn't, right? I saw you know, we get comments from you guys saying, you know, I'm struggling to get started or I'm scared about this or I'm scared about that. And so for me, if I'm doing something scary, which let's all agree that virtual assistants starting a business is scary, right? If I'm doing something new and scary, I want to know the pitfalls. I want to know what I'm getting into, right? Like, tell me all the details. I'm a planner. So tell me all the details so I can know ahead of time what's laying ahead so I can prepare for it, right? Let's talk about the mistakes that I've seen people make, okay? Mistake number one, they think they need to have everything perfect before launching. Oh, does this hit anybody, right? I am a self proclaimed perfectionist. And I think that so often we put this undue pressure on ourselves that everything has to be just right before we can tell the world about our business. And this is why, I mean, I believe so passionately that this is a mistake that we've actually made it. One of our company core values is that we value action over perfection, right? Because how you're going to grow your business is a series of imperfect steps forward. Literally today I was talking to my team. We were working on a project and it was like, oh man, we missed the ball on this. And I'm like, no, we didn't miss the ball. We did a draft one, right? A draft one is a building block to a draft two, right? And even the things that we think, oh, I missed the mark that didn't quite work the way that I wanted it to. It was your draft one, right? So allow yourself a draft one of your business. I tell people all the time, don't wait to start marketing, right? Go ahead and get that marketing ball rolling as soon as possible. It's never too early to just tell people on a Facebook page, you know, on Instagram, whatever, to friends and family, just start saying, hey guys, I'm starting a virtual assistant business. I'm so excited. I'm starting this. People can ask you questions about it. It's starting to get the word out about what you're doing, right? Because if we wait to do that until we're like, everything's perfect, then we lose so much momentum. I remember uh, a few months ago, I was sitting down with a friend for lunch and she was starting a new business, a service-based business. It wasn't quite virtual assistance, but it was similar. And she had been working for months and months and months on her prices and her packaging and her logo and a website. And she was like, it's almost ready. I'm almost ready to launch. I'm almost ready to launch. She's like, I'm going to do it. She's like, I have to feel like I have to be really ready though for like the influx of clients. I felt kind of bad, honestly, because I was like, I don't know what you think is going to happen once you say like, I'm here, I'm open for business. I have a website. Like this sounds bad, but I had to like kind of break it to her. I was like, I don't think that like just saying I'm open is not generally when like this huge flood of people just start coming in, begging for your services, right? Marketing in the beginning, you kind of got to go out, right? It's not passive marketing. It's not, I'm here, I'm open for business. You got to take some steps forward and go out and actually build relationships and go to networking meetings and apply for job ops, right? Like you actually have to, in the beginning days, at least do something proactive, active marketing, not passive marketing. And so just by getting your website done and saying I'm open doesn't necessarily mean that like, floods of people are going to be coming to you, right? So what does that mean? That means that there's not like this moment. I think sometimes we think like there's this moment where it's all just going to 
happen, right? And so you've got to get everything ready and perfect for that moment. And that's just not necessarily true. That's not how business generally works, right? It's I put something together. I tell somebody about it. I pivot, right? I worked on this. I applied for this job. Oh, it didn't quite work out. Okay, now I'm going to pivot and I'm going to keep working this thing, right? And I'm going to approach it from a different angles. And when something works, right? Maybe you go to a networking meeting or you start advertising on LinkedIn or whatever the case might be. Something works you do more of what works, right? Like that is business. And so I think there's this moment sometimes where we get in our heads that like, oh, I just got to get it perfect, right? And so we'll spend three months like building a website and getting our logo to move from right here to over here. And I can't figure out how to make it move anybody, right? Have you done this before? Where it's just like, oh, I can't get it the exact color or the spacing is off. And you'll spend like eight hours on that. And then three months later, you're like, well, I've been doing my business for three months and I still don't have clients because you haven't told anyone about your business, right? So like, do you see why I'm passionate about this? So perfection is going to be the enemy of progress, guys. And so we've got to keep moving forward, even if it's imperfect, call it a draft one and just move forward, right? We value action over perfection. This is so, so, so important. Okay. Yep. Pam says I've been prepping for two years, right? Like at a certain point, you've just got to do the thing, right? And it's going to be messy and it's not going to be perfect, but it's the only way that you're actually going to get toward your goal. Do you think that Michael Jordan probably made the first basket he ever shot? Probably not, right? (laughs) Three years old, probably didn't. You just got to start somewhere, right? And so we start, we value action over perfection. Mistake number two that I see people make is that they don't set clear boundaries with their clients. Okay. So this is one of those things that I love telling people up front because there's something that happens when we get our first client that guys, it's so awesome. How many of you guys have gotten your first client before? Let me know in the comments. There's something about getting the first client. We call it the first client hump because it's like, this is real. Like this actually works, right? And if I did it once, I can do it again. And so there's something inside of you that's like, I can really do this. And there's a confidence that happens. And I love it. It's like, oh, it's why we celebrate. Like if you guys don't know every single Wednesday, you can go to our Instagram. You'll see it tomorrow. We do a Wednesday wins, W-I-N-S, get it? Wednesday, Wednesday. (laughs) And so we just shout out and we love to celebrate with you guys, right? Because you guys are making huge strides in your business and it's so fun to see. But what can happen sometimes is that we get that first client and we're just so excited and we're so anticipating and we just want to do such a great job that we tend to kind of blur our boundaries, right? And so I believe that it's really important in the beginning of your business to be clear about what you will and you won't do, right? And so when somebody asks for something beyond that, and when you agree to that, right, or you just do it anyways, that's called scope creep. It's outside of the scope of work. They're creeping outside of that scope of work. And it usually starts gradual, right? It's just like, oh, could you also do this? And maybe could you do this? And maybe could you do this? And it might be with the services that you offer. It might be the hours that you're doing, right? It's like, well, you know, it actually took me a little longer than I think that it should have to do this project. So maybe I'm just not going to log those hours, right? And what's problem with this is that it starts to become a habit, right? And once, if you start doing work outside of what you've agreed to do, right, the scope of work and the services isn't what you agreed to, or the hours, you're starting to work hours and not actually logging them, right? You're not getting paid well for the work that you're doing. What can happen is that you start to resent it, right? You're like, oh, like I'm doing so much for this client and, da, 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 and they don't respect. No, because you didn't teach them to respect your boundaries, right? And so this is why I'm super passionate and something that we teach our students is to set those boundaries from the very beginning. The best way you can do that is with a kickoff onboarding meeting, right? Is where you sit down with your clients, a special meeting that you have for them where you say, hey, here's how I work, right? I communicate this way. I will have a 24-hour turnaround. And if they say, Oh, here's something. Can you do this ASAP? Like, can you get this done by the end of the day? Yes, I can. As per our contract, this will have a rush fee on it, right? You can add a rush fee to things that have to be done urgently because if you're like, Oh, just this time, just this time, I'll go ahead and do that project really quick for you. Then you've set up a pattern, right? Or I don't usually give my phone number out to clients, but for you, I will. And then they're texting you at 3 a.m., right? You've got to establish the boundary. And I know that it's tempting. I know that it's tempting, but I'm just telling you this after seeing tons of people go through this and say, oh, like I stretched it too far. And it's so much harder to 
backtrack, right? Once you've allowed a client to cross that boundary. Anybody read the book Boundaries? It's such a good book. I love this little chunk. So I just wanted to read it to you. Boundaries define us. They define what is me and what is not me. A boundary shows me where I end and someone else begins. This is my responsibility and this is somebody else's responsibility, leading me to a sense of ownership, knowing what I am to own and take responsibility for gives me freedom. Taking responsibility for my life opens up many different options. Boundaries help us keep the good in and the bad out. Setting boundaries inevitably involves taking responsibility for your choices. You are the one who makes them. You are the one who must live with their consequences. And you are the one who may be keeping yourself from making the choices you could be happy with, right? Oh, so good. So good. As somebody who's not always naturally the best at boundaries, I do things naturally I'm just like, oh, I guess I could do it. Oh, I guess I could do it. Oh, it's not really that hard. It's going to be easier for me just to do it myself. No, 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 no. Set those boundaries, right? So good. I think that this is why a contract is so vital. If you've heard my live streams before, you've heard me go on my contract rants, you will not regret setting a contract in place, right? You should understand your contract. Please don't just copy and paste something off the internet, right? Like I've actually been in a lawsuit before. It's the only lawsuit we've ever been in in business. And don't worry, we settled in my favor. So it ended up fine. However, it was a lot. It was money, right? Getting a lawyer. It was time. It was stress all because I copy and paste a contract off the internet way back when I first started my business. I shouldn't have done it. Right. And this is why these are the mistakes, right? That we tell people don't do this. Don't do this. Have a contract with every single client that you work with. Understand your contract, know what it means, right? That's why our savvy system students, we give you a contract. We don't just give you a contract. You actually have the ability to email the attorney who created the contract and ask her questions about the contract. We've included that in the cost of our course. We literally pay her monthly on retainer just for you guys to have access to somebody to ask about your contract. Now she's not just a free lawyer (laughs) to ask any questions. My neighbor's dog, no, that's not what we're doing, but you should understand your contract. It's really, really important, okay? And it's a great place to actually set your boundaries. Mistake number three they don't get accountability or support. This is huge, you guys. I'm such a fan of courses and coaching and accountability. I've grown this business from 2015 when I first started in my basement apartment, right up to a multi-million dollar company. And every time that I've had significant growth in my business, it's because I've had some kind of a course I was going through and really committed to, right? I blocked out everything else. I just really committed to the course or a coaching community or, you know, some kind of a mentorship that I was going through, some kind of program that I was going through. It's always when I've had huge strides in my business personally. I've seen a lot of business owners try to go at it alone, right? And without the vision, without the roadmap, without the accountability, they flounder, right? Or they'll grow a little bit, but then things will go down because they're just trying new things, new things, new things, right? And so having like a really clear roadmap and accountability to keep you on track with that roadmap is so vital. And it's how I personally have grown my business. I want to be a constant learner, right? Any constant learners here? Like I love learning. I want people to tell me when it's like, oh, I don't know if that's a good idea. Now at the end of the day, it's my choice. I get to choose the business. And sometimes people will say something's not not a good idea. And I feel it in my gut. I'm like, no, I think this is it. And I do it. And maybe it's great. And maybe it's not great. And I learn from my mistakes, right? And that's okay. Action over perfection, right? But having somebody who can just be like, oh, you've been here before me. Here's what I'm doing. Look at my pricing. Look at my packages. What do you think of this is so vital. And somebody where you can say, hey, you know, going back to action over perfection, if you are a perfectionist, accountability can help so much in this because you can say, all right, I'm getting stuck on my business name. I just keep going around and around and around. And I know it is keeping me from making progress. So whatever name I come up with by Friday at 3 p.m., that's the name I'm going with. I'm just going to make a decision, right? Like sometimes you need the accountability to help you from not just getting stuck in those perfectionistic tendencies. Okay. Community can look like a lot of things too. It can look like a local networking group. It can look like weekly coffee with a friend, right? Maybe you have an accountability partner. That's one of the first things in the savvy system that we do is that we will actually have you try to find an accountability partner inside of the group, right? It could be talking to your spouse about your business struggles, finding a like-minded Facebook group, like our VA savvies community, right? Investing in a course or a coaching program with others to help you pursue that same path. Accountability can look like a lot of different things, but if you can look at yourself, and I challenge you to do this. Look 
at your business. Look at what you're trying to do and ask yourself, honestly, ask yourself, do I have anybody holding me accountable? Do I have anybody that I'm sharing my struggles with? Do I have anybody that I'm asking questions? Do I have a roadmap that I'm following? And if not, it's going to affect your business, right? I'm not saying it's impossible, right? But how much further you will go and how much more fun it will be when you're not doing this alone. Okay. So find accountability, find support. If you need that, we're launching the Savvy System soon, so you can get that there, but it's not the only place to find it, right? A proven blueprint and accountability we've seen time and time again be the roadmap for success, right? This is what happens all the time inside of our community. Kaylee says, I can't believe it. One year, I was literally stumbled upon Abby, found out about virtual assistants. A year later, I run a VA and OBM agency. I always told my family I had no clue this is a path I'd be going down, but here we are. Just want to share a small win with you. It's been 30 days since I tried being a virtual assistant and I have a client who I love from studying full-time, working full-time as a VA. I've quadrupled my monthly salary. Yamalet says, I finished module seven, finishing up this weekend to launch my business. I have all the systems in place. I'm ready to hit the ground running. This community has helped me so much to get this done. Vanessa says, thanks to the community and the course, I've secured my highest paying retainer client to date. She's dreamy and a joy to work with. I absolutely love hearing the stories of our students who are changing their lives through virtual assistants. If that's something that you want to, if you say, Abby, I want to learn from you how to start a virtual assistant business, you can check out my VA training com. This is my complete course. This is what I have led over 5,000 individuals through how to grow a thriving at home business. Check it out. I know you're going to love it. All right. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video.